Hi, my name is David Kelsey. Today we're going to be talking about causal reasoning. So, um, a causal claim um, essentially is uh, a relationship um, stated between uh, one thing uh, and another, right? Such that one is the cause of the other, right? We call the cause the cause of the uh, effect, which is the the result of that cause, right? Um, so, for example, we might say something like vitamin C. Uh, can cure a cold, right? The cause there would be the vitamin C and the uh, effect would be the, the cold disappearing, right? Um, so we say that a cause is something which um, produces the effect, right? It's something um, without which an effect wouldn't, the effect of it wouldn't occur, right? So um, we do say, we want to say that um, a cause somehow necessitates its effect and I think the idea is um, we want to say something like it has the, the, the cause has a power to produce the effect, right? A kind of causal power. Um, and so a, causal, a, a, a cause can't just be a, what we would call a correlation, right? Um, there has to be a kind of causal power underlying the cause to bring about the effect. So sometimes you can have what's called a correlation. A correlation is just, uh, you know, what appears to be a causal relationship um, but uh, isn't one, right? So, for example, we might have just two things that always occur together, right? But neither uh, is the cause of the other, right? And so that's a correlation. So, for example, um, imagine, imagine that uh, every time I have three pennies in my pocket, uh, I get a cold, right? Something like that, right? Just because, uh, you know, I always have three pennies in my pocket when I get a cold, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the cause of the cold, right? Um, that's that's what we call a, a correlation uh, and and not a cause, right? Um, and uh, this is uh, kind of leads us to the next point um, that when we reason like this, um, that just because two things are correlated means that one must cause the other. Um, this is a kind of mistake in causal reasoning, right? And uh, this is what we call the the post hoc fallacy thinking that just because you have correlation, you must have causation, right? Um, so, uh, the, again, the idea is that we must be open-minded enough in causal reasoning to uh, accept the fact that the possibility that you could just have correlation, accidental correlation without causation, such as in the uh, three pennies example, right? Just because when you have three pennies, uh, you get a cold, right? Uh, and maybe that's every time you have three pennies, you get the cold. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, that's the cause of the cold, right? We have to be open-minded enough to see that kind of thing in, in the world, right? Okay, so the, in the next set of uh, slides then, um, we'll be discussing uh, the difference between uh, relevant difference reasoning and common thread reasoning. Now. Um, the idea here between the, the, the distinction here that we're on about is really the difference between um, how, right, it's a, it's a question of how we determine the cause of some unexplained effect, right? So imagine, for example, that you wake up in the morning with a headache, right, and you want to understand what might have caused that headache so that you don't do it again, right? And so um, this is called causal reasoning and the idea is in causal reasoning we attempt to um, explain right to determine the cause of some effect uh, that we're unsure of at this point right so <clears throat> um, the kind of uh, causal reasoning we look at first is what we call relevant difference reasoning and relevant difference reasoning is kind of like it sounds uh, what you're searching for is the relevant difference, okay? Now, we use, in particular, we use relevant difference reasoning when you have an effect that's unexplained, but that's occurred for the very, very first time, right? So a one-off effect, if you will, and it's occurring sort of out of the blue, out of nowhere, right? And a lot of times when uh, you have an effect that occurs like that, um, you if it's a good effect, right, you want to try to produce it again, right? And of course, if it's a bad one, you want to try to avoid it, right? So you're, you're out to determine the cause of that effect to either get more of it or less of it, right? That's the idea. 
So again, if you think back to my example that I used before about how, um, you know, you wake up in the morning all of a sudden with a headache, right? Um, this would be an example of uh, a good example, a good time to use relevant difference reasoning. And so what we want to do is to try to explain the possible cause of that headache, okay? And so now, what are we, what are we aiming to try to do here with relevant difference reasoning? What we're looking for is the relevant difference. The difference that explains, that has the causal power to make that effect, right? And what you're doing for is you're really searching for similar circumstances to the one this morning when you wake up, when you woke up with that headache. And you're looking for similar circumstances in which you didn't have the headache, right? And then the idea is that that difference, right? The difference between when you didn't have the headache and now today when you do, right? That's the cause of that headache, right? That's the relevant difference. So say, for example, every night this week, you have gone to bed at 2 a.m. and you've woken up at 10 a.m. in the morning, right? But uh, this morning in particular, you have this, this huge headache, right? So then you ask yourself, what is the difference about this morning? What makes this particular morning different from the past five when I didn't get the headache, right? So you think to yourself, and you think to yourself, and you realize that, oh, uh, I had three cups of coffee yesterday, and I was playing video games all night till 2 a.m., right? So you had three cups of coffee, you were playing video games until 2 a.m., and you think to yourself, well, look, I really wasn't doing that so much the other nights of the week, then I didn't get the headache. So you think that that, right, uh, is the relevant difference. That's the cause of your headache, right? Having those three cups of coffee and staying up late playing the video games. And that's really the key, right? You have to think about it um, in terms of what could possibly have the causal power to bring about that effect. What is the relevant difference that could be like that, right? And of course, having a bunch of coffee and, and staying up late and uh, playing a bunch of video games, right, could be hard, could be hard on the body, right, and, and the mind. So could probably likely be the cause of the, the headache. So, so of course, in that moment, then you, you decide, uh, oh, okay, I just won't do that again, right? That's the idea. Another example we'll look at um, with regard to the, um, to the relevant difference reasoning, imagine that you're driving down the freeway and your car overheats all of a sudden, right? So you're, there you are driving along and all of a sudden your, the temperature gauge goes through the roof, smoking in the engine and all of that, right? Um, and so of course, uh, you know, you've been driving the car for months now, you haven't had an overheated engine. This is out of the blue, out of nowhere, right? So you ask yourself, what's different about today? What's different about right now, right? For months, no overheated engine, and then today it's different, right? So you ask yourself, um, what could possibly be the cause of that particular overheating engine? So here, what we have to ask ourselves is what might be, what could be, what has the causal power to produce an overheated engine, right? And so if you know a little bit about about cars, you, you think to yourself, well, it could be just, for example, some type of hose, right, uh, is, is leaking, right? Could also be a, a leak in the radiator, something like that, right? Water leaking out of the car, maybe oil, right? Um, so you have to think to yourself, well, was there anything that might have caused, you know, in this particular moment, in this situation, a leak like that, right? And then you think to yourself, oh, yeah, when I was driving along a few miles back, I heard a large thud and felt like a sort of, you know, jamming underneath the car. So you think to yourself, well, look, maybe what happened was that something came underneath the car and, and opened up a hole in the radiator or maybe a, a hose or something like that. And so that's likely the cause of the uh, overheated engine, right? That's the difference, right? So that's how relevant difference reasoning goes, right? You're trying to look for what's special, what's different about this moment, right? When you have this unexplained effect occurring out of nowhere, right? What's special and different about now, you know, that could produce that, that effect. The last example I'll give of uh, relevant difference reasoning, imagine that you, I mean, a really simple example, imagine that you go over to the post office and it's closed, 
right? Uh, you went yesterday, you went the day before, and it was open, right? So today in particular, it's closed. You ask yourself, what's different about today, right? As compared to the, to the, to the days before. And then you realize, oh yeah, it's a holiday. Well, that would explain why, uh, you know, uh, the, the post office is closed today, right? So, so again, um, you're, you're with relevant difference reasoning, when you have a kind of one-off effect, you're just looking for the difference in that uh, circumstance, right? That might explain that effect. So the other type of causal reasoning we'll look at is called common thread reasoning. And with common thread reasoning, just like with relevant difference reasoning, you're really looking again to explain an effect, right? An effect that you don't understand, right? But the difference is with common thread reasoning, it's a reoccurring effect. So you have an effect that occurs over and over, right? Uh, not just a one-off effect. You have an effect that's occurring many, many times and yet you still haven't uh, explained the cause of it. You haven't found the, determined the cause of that effect, right? And so um, with a circumstance like this, where you have this reoccurring effect, of course, you want to determine the cause of it, because of course, if that effect is a good one, you want to produce more of it. And then of course, if, it, if it's not a good effect, right, you obviously would want to um, want to get rid of it, you know? A simple example might be something like, you know, say you, you go, um, you go to the gym and, you know, and you're sick the next day, right? And you, you notice the pattern, right? Every time you've gone to the gym the last six months, you've gotten, you felt ill after, right? And so you ask yourself what might be the cause of, um, you know, of an effect like that, getting ill uh, like that, you know? Personally, if, if that happens to me, then I probably don't go to the gym much more, right? Or maybe find a different one, you know? But, but that's the idea here is we want to determine... Um, you know, what is the, what's the, what's the difference here, right? What's the difference that keeps uh, occurring with each uh, instance of the reoccurring effect, right? What has the causal power to produce the effect on every occasion, right? So imagine uh, the example that I really like with this one. Imagine that, uh, you know, it's summertime. Imagine that, you, you know, you enjoy throwing a barbecue having some friends over, having beers and stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the evening on like a Saturday, a Saturday night in summer. And, uh, you, you know, you're having these barbecues on a regular basis, say every Saturday night, you're having them every week. And you've been doing this for two months now, say. Now imagine that on every Saturday for those two months that the mosquitoes are relentless, right? They're just everywhere. Mosquitoes outside biting and, you know, obviously nobody likes that, right? And so what we want to try to do in that case then is figure out the cause of those mosquitoes swarming around and, and, and all of that on Saturday so we can try to get rid of them, you know, and enjoy our, our barbecue the next Saturday, right? So um, the idea here is, again, what you want to, th to try to think about is what's common, right? What's a, a possible cause of mosquitoes being sort of like that, right? Swarming around and being, you know, sort of overpopulated in the backyard, uh, and then also, uh, what's the possible cause of that kind of effect? And then also, uh, what uh, of those possible causes has occurred, you know, these last two months on these Saturdays when you've thrown these barbecues, right? So you have to think about the possible causes of mosquitoes that go along with these last two months. And then you think to yourself, oh, well, I've been watering really heavily every Saturday morning for the last couple months. And of course, because uh, mosquitoes like you know standing water, maybe that's maybe that's the cause, right? So, um, with common thread reasoning, that's kind of the idea: is you're looking for the commonality to all occurrences of the effect. And of course, that common th theme, right? That that pattern there has to produce, be able to produce that effect, right? It has to have that kind of power. So, of course, standing water from from you know. Uh, watering the lawn would do that, right? Okay, so the way we're going to end this lecture then is to just have a brief discussion about mistakes we can make in causal reasoning. And uh, I don't really want to go over these too much. And I think the important thing to me, it seems, with causal reasoning is to keep an open mind, right? You really have to keep an open mind about all the different possible causes of an effect before, you know, jumping, jumping to a conclusion about that, right? We don't want to be hasty. 
right? And I think, too, uh, secondly, obviously, the more we know about the possible causes of an effect, um, the more knowledge we have, the more likely it is we'll be able to um, understand what the cause of some effect is and to uh, then, you know, obviously either uh, get more of it or, or you know, uh, do away with it, right? Um, I think a couple points here that are good. Um, obviously, um, point two here, um, try not to focus on irrelevant differences or common threads. Uh, that's a great point, right? A lot of times, um, you know, if you're searching for the cause of some effect, um, you could be searching just quite simply in the wrong place, right? If we have enough information, we, uh, you know, we can really understand what can produce the effect. That's, that's really important. And we don't want to waste our time searching for things that have no impact on whether the effect occurs or, or not, right? We need to focus on relevant possible causes. Um, the, uh, the, the next point, I think, is about um, overlooking, um, you know, possibilities, right? Um, so one mistake I see, for example, uh, you know, imagine that your, your, your car won't start. I think everyone's kind of first inclination is to think that the battery uh, needs to be replaced in that case, right? Well, one of the things you want to be careful, right, there are other, other possible causes uh, that might produce that, you know, that, that effect, right? So, for example, imagine that your starter was no good. You needed to replace the starter. So we don't want to, in a moment like that, we don't want to neglect that possibility buy a new battery and then realize that our battery was good all along and now we have also to buy a new starter, right? So we want to be careful not to look, overlook all the possibilities, right? Maybe it's the starter, maybe it's the battery, but we need to make sure that we check on, on both, right? Um, the next example I have here, imagine that you're, cr you're climbing a rope and uh, the rope breaks and you fall, right? So you you suppose that the rope breaking is what caused you to fall, right? But in fact, it could be just the reverse, right? And, and that's one of the things we want to keep in mind as well, is that sometimes when we assume that one thing is the cause of the other, in fact, it could be the other way around, right? What we assume the effect to be could in fact be the cause, right? So we want to be open-minded enough for that. Um, the last point I'll make is that sometimes we have to remember that what looks to be a causal relationship is in fact just coincidence. It's just correlation, right? And we can't, we can't ever uh, lose sight of that idea, that point, right? And uh, so we just have to keep in mind that maybe what appears to be causal, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sort of um, effect, uh, causal reasoning, causal um, relationship going on is in fact merely just coincidence. So keep an open mind to that as well. Um, other than that, um, you know, I, I don't think I have much else to say about causal reasoning. You know, in general, I think um, we really, um, as we get older, right, and we have more experience about the way causes and effects work, we get better at this kind of thing. And so, um, you know, I think if we just keep an open mind about it, we get enough information about what might be the causes of the effects that we see in our lives, we could be quite good at this uh, causal reasoning. So, all right, I well, hope you enjoyed the lecture. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.